All right, I want to welcome everybody. I want to welcome in our guest, and uh, our guest is Chris Cabanillas. He is the CEO of uh, Cabanillas and Associates. He's an immigration policy and immigration attorney. And uh, Chris, welcome, sir. Thank you for having me. All right, yesterday was a, 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 a big day of sorts. Um, there was a lot of violence around the country. We had lots of people arrested, uh, lots of windows broken, lots of people hurt, lots of people having things thrown at, lots of broken things. It was May Day, and, and this May Day took on, from the news reports that I hear, uh, extra special significance with regards to immigration. And I assume that's because of the, the Trump policies, or at least enforcing uh, the, the, the policies Trump is enforcing, which are really Obama's policies and the law. But talk about yesterday. Well, I think yesterday was sort of a, a moment where a lot of people thought that, you know, they're going to make it a de facto sort of immigrants day as well. And so a lot of people came out, obviously social media uh, spread the word a lot that, look, come out and have your voice heard. There's a, a big feeling amongst a lot of immigrants right now that they're not wanted here, uh, that they're looked down and uh, as some sort of a um, uh, tax, if you will, on other people or, or you know, they're bringing the country down. And so... A lot of people want to get their voices heard that, uh, that they're needed here. Well, you say immigrants. Uh, I mean, you know, th there's, a, there's a, a word that the media has uh, shunned, and, uh, and I think this is part of the problem when it comes to resentment. Even among legal immigrants, it's illegal immigrants. And, you know, when I hear um, uh, Governor Cuomo here in New York say that uh, we're all immigrants, uh, which is nonsense. I'm not an immigrant. I was born here, and he's not an immigrant. He was born here. But, but... I mean, you do acknowledge the difference between immigrants and illegal immigrants, people who are here illegally. Yes, yes. Well, yeah, look, I, I acknowledge there's a difference. I'm not whether they're right or wrong. It's, you know, this is what's happening. There's a feeling, especially among the younger group, that oftentimes uh, were not themselves the ones who, who sort of uh, decision, made the decision to, to take the journey over here. Uh, that they're here now and, uh, and sort of what happens with them. And I think that there was a feeling under Obama that there was going to be some sort of legislation coming forward in the future that would uh, enable them uh, on a path to, to, to legal residency and, uh, and to be able to sort of come out of the shadows and, and to start to contribute to society like anybody else. And, uh, and that's, that's, that's done a 180 since Trump's come in. Well, I mean, I don't know, you talk about the so-called dreamers? Yes. All right. Well, I don't. I don't know that the. I don't know that they've been targeting dreamers. There was one guy who a big deal was made about. He was thrown out of the country, but I think he had a, a, a committed some kind of low-level crime. Um, but I, I think, in part, for the most part, uh, I think that uh, the the uh, ICE agents and the, and the the people in charge of all this have targeted people who have committed crimes uh, and and have gotten them out of the country, or at least tried to bring them to justice. And, and this is something that Barack Obama did plenty of as well. I mean, he used to brag about it. So it, why is it that Trump has come under this scrutiny um, from the media and from activists and, and, and people in the community involved, whereas Obama basically got a pass while he was doing it? Well, I think that, look, a lot of it is, is sort of on, on, on the delivery of it, but also on sort of what's to come. You know, Trump has made a, a, a lot of noise that uh, he intends to triple the amount of ICE agents that are out there, and he wants to um, sort of you know, bring down what are known as sanctuary cities or anybody that, uh, that they're not fully enforcing uh, the, the ability to, to be able to deport. So um, look, I think what, it, what it's done is it's created a bunch of fear uh, in a lot of people. And there's people that are afraid that, look, you know, they're saying on the one hand, it's only going to be criminals who they're going to be uh, seeking to deport. But, uh, but then they come knocking on the wrong door, and, uh, and then I end up getting deported as well. So um, there's people, you know, as you know right now, this is the time and age where uh, uh, the social media can make anybody a celebrity. And, and people are filming things, and people are getting out and trying to have their voices heard. Well, you, you, I mean, you know about this group Antifa, right? No. Okay, well, they're, they're, a, they're a radical group. They were involved in a lot of the violence uh, yesterday. I mean, and again, you even look in Paris and you have Molotov cocktails, you have, uh, and of course there's a big election in France where a lot of it is based on immigration and, and similar issues to what we have here. Uh, you, you brought up sanctuary cities. Um, and, and, you know, the, the stupidest argument I've ever heard in my life is that we have to let these people who 
some of whom are criminals, gang members, criminals, rapists, murderers, uh, have sanctuary where the feds can't touch them. Now get this, because if a, uh, another illegal who's not involved in it sees a crime, we want that person to be able to pick up the phone and report it. I mean, that, if that's the best that the, the pro-sanctuary city crowd could do for an explanation and a reason, and, and I've heard it repeated by Nancy Pelosi and others, and I've always said, this is insanity. Why on earth shouldn't these localities be forced to comply with the law of the land when it comes to not harboring criminals? Well, I think, look, there's, there's, there's a long... Um there's a lot involved in whether somebody has a right to be here or not. And that's going to become uh, come before uh, an immigration judge. There's often waivers that can be filed. There's a lot to be said for that. So the question is, are these people actually criminals that are here, especially those that have been brought when they, when they were younger? And do you want uh, local law enforcement getting involved in, in this sort of federal enforcement of these federal laws? Um, you know, I think I think there's there's something to be said there that some people don't want to involve their law enforcement. But Chris, I'm talking about. But again, yeah. I, I will say I, I think that look, I think that there's probably a lot of ICE agents I would imagine that have felt restrained uh, over this time that they're not allowed to do their jobs. And I think that um, you know I, the, the rhetoric now I would imagine has to feel pretty good for them to think like, all right, well now I can finally do what I'm supposed to be doing and enforce the law. So. Well, isn't that, a, isn't that, a, I mean, it, do you believe that's a good thing, that they should be able to do what they got to do and enforce the law? I do. I do think they could, I, look, I think ultimately um, whether somebody's not enforcing the law is really just part of a bigger issue where there's, I, I think, look, laws need to be changed. And I think that they need to address the realities that there are millions of people here that they're not going to be able to deport. So to sort of create a system where it's like, oh, yeah, we're going to start, um, you know, hurting up and hurrying up and deporting folks, it doesn't really solve the issue. So I think that there's other things that can be done. I think they need to address it with more broader legislation. All right. So could we agree that the violence that we saw yesterday is totally unacceptable in any way, shape, or form? No matter who, I mean, you know, no matter where it was, which city. Correct? Oh, obviously. Okay. And could we agree that if if a person has is accused of rape or murder or whatever, and they're holed up in a sanctuary city? I'm sure those aren't the type of people, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, that you would say the city should keep ICE away from getting those people. I mean, do we agree on that they should be brought to justice? Absolutely. All right. So then, 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 then you're, you're talking about a segment of, you know, when you say whether, they're, they, whether they broke the law or not, a lot of people would say if they're here illegally, they're here illegally. I mean, they, you know, I'm not talking about the dreamers. Uh, I'm talking about people who came here, not as children with their parents, but came here illegally and, and, and broke the law. But, but so we may not be that far apart, but it seems to me that most people that were out there protesting yesterday and most people in your position that I've talked to, you know, they, they're hardcore sanctuary city. They're hardcore no ice. They're hardcore, you know, they didn't break the law. They have a right to be here. So, so maybe you're in the middle kind of. Oh, I'm, I'm definitely in the middle. I think, frankly, most people are in the middle. You know, I mean, there's the, the, the extremes are obviously the ones who are getting on TV because they're the ones that are getting everybody all excited. But I think most people are in the middle, right? Everybody knows. We all, I'm sure you know somebody who's, you know, undocumented, quote, unquote, illegal that you think very highly of. And you may or may not know that, they, that, they are, that they're undocumented, but I can assure you, you probably know somebody that you get coffee from every day. Okay, when you and, say... And, and put, yeah. and push gun to shove, you probably wouldn't want them thrown out of the country. Right, and when you when you say I, I don't I don't consciously know I really don't I would tell you if I did but I don't I I, I, I don't know if somebody who's illegal some I might know somebody who might be but like you said but I don't where do you where do you live I live in New Jersey I'm sure I, there's I can one hundred percent assure you that. <laughs> all right one more for you the um, the chairman of the DNC who has a problem with his uh, his mouth running and curses coming out Tom Perez. Uh, said yesterday, he spoke outside a rally yesterday outside the White House in, in, in line with the May Day celebrations and said the Democratic Party will always be here fighting for you. And he asserted that um, uh, there are no human being is illegal. I, I mean, do you agree with that? <laughs> well, I, could, I think, look, you know, this is everybody wants to, to be you know, politically correct or what you will with, with, with sort of the labels. I think the difficulty comes in that, you know, there, there's a lot of kids involved. Whether people want to believe that or not, everybody wants to make it out to be like, oh, we're really talking about the bad guys, the criminals. 
that's not really the majority of people. The majority of people are, are perfectly good people, people that are going to school, they're trying to, they're trying to do the right thing, and, and that there's this label going on. It's a problem. And let me say, but, but, but they are here illegally. Fine, but there's plenty of examples, right? Where there's, you know, you got you got kids that are in school. They didn't do anything. No, not the kids. People. Forget the kids. Just for, this is what's yeah. happening. Yeah. You got you got you got you got uh, tables full of kids chanting Trump build the wall, build the wall by tackling this because the president enabled this and threw gasoline on this because that's who he is to get elected. Well, so you know, there's a lot of people upset about that. Well, and you know what? And, well, and it, wait, wait, wait. And encourage that, and he needs and he needs to know. That a lot of people don't like him for that. But that's, you know what, what I would say to that, with all due respect to you, because you're not them, uh, too bad. If you're here, if someone's here illegally and they don't like the fact that Donald Trump brought it up as a campaign issue and wants to build a wall and wants to send out illegals who don't belong here, too bad. I mean, they have no right to be here if they're here illegally, right? I mean, would you agree with that? Well, I would say this, right? I, I don't want to have them hear that. So whether you do, that's fine. And that's your prerogative, but I, I don't want to. And so if it bothers me enough to go and march and stand up and feel like I'm standing up for the little guy, then that's, that, that's who was out there yesterday. Well, yeah, and a, and a bunch of thugs, too, Un unfortunately. You always get that. Uh, it's good to talk to you, Chris. Uh, Chris uh, uh, Cabanillas, and he's the CEO of uh, Cabanillas and Associates. And if you need a good immigration attorney, uh, you just heard him. So you, you, you decide, and uh, you feel free to call him. Thank you, sir. Good to talk to you. Thank you. Good to talk to you. Bye-bye.